What's the deal with Kanifi pickups? We're gonna find out today. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. All right, so in late 2022, Fender announced the new American Vintage 2 series, which is basically their idea of blending custom shop elements and specs of very popular reissues, but producing them on USA-level guitars. So instead of having to spend like $4,000 on a custom shop, you have all of these models that you can learn about in this episode right here for just a little over $2,000, depending on what model. But today we're going to take a look at the 1975 Telecaster Deluxe, which I'm really happy somebody decided to new guitar day one of these because I've been wanting to check out some legitimate Kunifi pickups here. Now, if you don't know what those are, most Fender guitars that have these wide range humbuckers, as they say, aren't actually true wide range. So Kunifi, it stands for copper, nickel, and iron. Very similar to how Gibson's Alnico pickups are aluminum, nickel, and cobalt. It's just the materials that make up the pickups. But having these pickups return in this series is awesome because prior to this, it was only Japan doing it occasionally. So I'm glad now we have a USA release so I don't have to import more stuff. And we can argue all day long how you want to pronounce that, but I think Kunifi is just a fun way to say it. It reminds me of like Kunichiwa. It just sounds very friendly. So we're going to figure out what makes these things so darn special? Because I don't think I've had official ones of these before. But it's a Telecaster Deluxe, obviously based off of a 1975-ish era one, because we've got the giant headstock here. You've got things like the bullet truss rod. And besides the pickups, you have a different kind of pick guard on here due to the model. I mean, it's very Les Paul in style. I mean, you got a three-way toggle switch up here. You've got witch hat control knobs in a very familiar style. And it's just a really cool string through Telecaster here. Even has a comfort cut on the back. And some other vintage elements here also include the three bolt neck. Why do we call them bolts? I don't know. That's just the way we do, even though they're screws. <laughs> and it's got a nice, beautiful vintage tint to the lacquer. So as far as first impressions go, yeah, it's just a nice Telecaster, full-on gloss. You've got the poly everywhere. It's not like true nitro. They didn't go quite that crazy for this particular model. I mean, this is not meant to be a collectible one. It's just meant to be, you know, getting those custom shop specs at a slightly better price. So if all these specs seem desirable to you, these are running $2,300 brand new, and you've got three colors to choose from. We've got the three color sunburst, which we're looking at today, as well as an ebony finish, and a mocha color. All three are very 70s styled hues. But if you buy one of these things brand new, you get an awesome vintage inspired case. It's got that nice burnt orange material to it, which is very 70s. And then you get a little bit of some extra case candy, hang tags, and your usual fender baggie that does indeed have a very basic COA attached to it. So to learn more about this model, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs before we get to that playing demo. All right, let's go ahead and dig into these specs, starting with the body's wood. It's made out of alder. Now I can see one very obvious seam line, and the fact that it's not a center seam makes me believe there might be another one over here, but I just don't see it. But you've got some interesting wood grain in here. Almost kind of looks like ash, but it definitely is not, according to the spec sheets anyways. But inside our pickup cavities, it reads American Vintage 75 Telecaster Deluxe and another barcode in the bridge position. But you can see just how wide those routes are. For example, here's a regular humbucker in that same route. You definitely have some additional room. But if you wanted to add a third one or do some other pickups, you would have to do some additional routing. And it's a very minimal channel to get into your control cavity. But this is a heavy duty apparatus here. These wide range humbuckers are really hefty for a pickup. And keep in mind, we have some other elements on here, but I would assume those are like seven to eight ounces a piece because all this other stuff really doesn't weigh all that much. Whereas a normal humbucker is about five ounces. But take a look at the backside of these things. It's very interesting. So it's familiar, but different at the same time. Here's a side by side comparison to a regular humbucker. You can see it definitely is wider, is definitely a little bit taller. And the construction is similar, but not the same. So you still have your four base plate screws on each of them. But you have three adjustable pull pieces on the top and on the bottom. And then you have slug coils on the other three. Whereas on a typical Alnico pickup, you have all the adjustable pieces on just one side. But then your height adjustment legs, you actually have two screws for each side. That helps keep it secure, and you can also tilt the pickup in a different way if that's what you want to do. But here you can see the three-way toggle switch, how they wired it all up, and then we get to our pots. We've got these giant yellow capacitors, and these are indeed CTS pots. 
although I don't see a reading on them. But the output jack is located on the side of this one. And the bridge pickup reads 10.37k ohms within the circuit, the neck pickup at 9.34, and the middle for fun at 4.9. As far as the bridge, very typical stuff. You have six individual saddles, kind of like a Stratocaster, and it secures to the body using three screws. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the body. Let's move on to the neck. Huh. Do you guys see something wrong here, maybe? <laughs> I don't know what happened to our dot inlays, but they are way lower than they're even supposed to be. So at first I thought, okay, it's a quirky 70s spec. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. But then I went and looked at other ones online and no, I, th I think Fender just messed this neck up. Because it's really noticeable up here, like this marker's literally touching the fret. But once you know about that one, even this one, here's the middle point, it's a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. So something must have been off on the factory that particular day. I guess at least the side markers are in the right spot. But anyways, it's a one piece maple neck. There is no traditional fretboard on this guy, it's just all one piece. And the fretboard does have a thick gloss finish over top of it. So there's no satin players enhancements anywhere on this thing. It's full on gloss as it was in 1975. We're rocking a 25 and a half inch scale length with a nine and a half fretboard radius and 21 medium jumbo frets and a bone nut that measures 1.67 inches. That increases to 2.04 by the 12th. We've got a first fret neck depth of 0.82 and 0.95 by the 12th. They just call it a 1975 C-shaped neck. It feels kind of thin to be honest. There's that neck profile at the 1st and 12th fret. You can see it's a little bit more slim and rounded in the cording area, but then it flattens out a little bit for solos. That should be pretty comfy to play. And the headstock, I'm not sure if you noticed, they amber over this finish a little bit more than the rest because some of them aged that way. You can see a very clear difference on the edge there, so kind of more yellow color versus the honey. But you have traditional style tuners on here, it's not the poke it down, wrap it around kind. And you've got two string trees with your bullet truss rod and Fender Telecaster Deluxe decal. Moving on to the back shows you just need a new perspective to find the answer. Yeah, that's definitely a three-piecer. You can see it. It's right there. So one piece, two piece, and then the third piece. It's a shame this part had to get all cut up because it has some interesting wood grain patterns here. Nice and wavy, whereas this one's a little bit longer, and I would say these two match pretty well. But here you can see our string through ferrules comfort cut that we were talking about earlier, and our three bolt neck which does contain our serial number, V12227. And oof, looks like we got a slight neck pocket finish crack. So if that wasn't enough to return this one, yeah there's, there's a little bit of shipping damage. At least the other side's fine, and that's the one you see while you play. Moving up the back side of the neck, you've got your skunk stripe, but again, it's just one piece maple back here. You have a little bit of a character mark right here, and it's just the Fender branded tuners. You don't get like the F stamped ones or anything. They seem to work pretty nicely. All said and done, this one weighs eight pounds, 2.1 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how these pickups sound. Okay, yeah, these definitely sound a lot different. I'm noticing there's quite a considerable hum, though. I'll throw the distortion on real quick so I can kind of emphasize it. But it doesn't appear to be a grounding thing because hands on the strings were good, hands on the bridge okay. Here, we got a little bit. Then if you touch the pickups, it goes away, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But they have a very bright, almost single coil-like tone to them. It's interesting. Versus our bridge. I've 
come to really like that middle position. So even though it looks like a humbucker setup, it still kind of sounds like a normal Telecaster, just different. distorted tones, I mean, it's pretty much unusable with all that hum. So maybe not Fender Factory's best showing. I mean, maybe I messed up the grounding when I took the pick card off. I, I doubt it, but it's possible. And this annoying thing keeps happening. The high E string pull piece keeps catching the E string. Now that we know all about Fender's new 75 Telecaster Deluxe, what are my final thoughts on this one? Not Fender's best showing on this particular example. From the off-center dot inlays to, I guess we can't necessarily blame them for the neck pocket crack, and then to the noisy pickups. It wasn't my favorite guitar I've ever demoed, unfortunately, but these Cunifis definitely do have a very interesting tone to it. I totally understand why people are always like, ah, oh, just imagine if those were the real ones whenever I just had like a humbuckered equipped Telecaster, because these really do sound more Tele-like than a regular humbucker. So, I mean, if that's what you're going for, you're probably going to like this. However, it's probably not a model I would personally own at this point in time. I would want something a little bit more special, like maybe some sort of like a cool surf green sparkle finish on it. So I hope this video helps you make an informed decision on if you should buy one yourself or not. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. Hey, if you enjoyed tonight's video, how about you check out the Silent Siren Telecaster? That's one I really enjoyed. Beautiful white finish, but is that really an F-hole? Click here to find out.